All right, here's a solution video for a uh, lesson two challenge. This one has to do with firing an arrow towards a random monster. Another one is picking a target monster that's random and moving towards the target. So a little bit that idea about remembering who you've picked from before. So let's do this one quickly. I'm going to go to the player here. I see when they press the S key, I already have a bunch of code here that finds the number, picks a good random value, finds that ID. So I'm going to actually capture that and just copy it for my fire arrow. And I'm going to add event here. Key press. Letter F for fire arrow. So I'm going to paste that code I had before, which is what I would have typed anyways. And what I have here is I do have a monster picked out. M-I-D. Now I want to fire an arrow towards it. So I'll just say... Uh, Triple A can be my arrow. Instance create. An arrow from the player's X and Y position. Let's give that arrow fast speed. Now we have to find the direction that the arrow should take. So arrow, set your direction to point direction from the player's X and Y to which one's X and which one's Y. This idea again, right, that this is, whoops, not which one, almost a mistake there, which one is the number, let's say, 0 to 5. That is not the ID. I want this variable. I actually want what instance find has sent me back is that ID like a million fifty-seven. That's what I need when I'm doing this line down here. So almost a beginner mistake. There we go. So the monster's ID, X, and that monster ID's Y. Okay, so good that we almost made that, just to reinforce that one. And the image angle of this arrow should be equal to the direction of that arrow, now that we've set it. Now let's test this out. This should work nicely. And when I hit the F key to fire, you'll see it's just picking a random monster to fire to each time. And obviously, as the monsters leave the screen, you know, there's less choice. Then it'll always fire to the same monster. And you know what? With my safety check at the top code there, like right here, when that monster's gone, you'll see that the code will still work just fine with no errors. And actually, it's taking me to the next room. But it would have worked. All right, next part was select a target. It said to give the player a variable to keep track of target and set it to negative four when the player starts. So here's what we'll do. Instead of this one being global, like it was inside of our video example, I'm just going to give this variable to the player to show you it can be global or belong to an instance. And I'm going to call it target and set it to negative four, indicating I have no target currently selected. Now when I hit the T key, key press, letter T, I am supposed to randomly pick a target. Well, I'm going to slap that code I had before, which randomly picks a monster. And there it is. I have the ID of that monster. Now technically, that ID of that randomly picked monster, I want that to be the target variable. So I can do this target equals the ID of that monster. Now my target set. Okay, that's good. So that's keeping track of the target. Now every time I hit that T key, it's going to randomly pick a new monster, find its ID, and reset that target. So the player knows there's always one target it's after. Now uh, it says when I hit the M key, I want to move towards this target if it exists. So Let's go to the M key, key press letter M, and a little bit of code we'll put in there. I'm first going to do my little check to make sure that my target still exists. So instance exists target. If it's false, I'm going to exit out of here. Now, why might it be false? Well, if I picked a ghost randomly, 
and then 10 seconds later that ghost leaves the screen or gets shot down by an arrow, it's not going to be there anymore. So you always have to make sure you do this kind of check, right? If it's there, let's move towards it. So I basically just have to find which way to go towards it. So I'll just say, hey, set my direction to point direction from my XY to targets X and the target ID Y. Okay, so that's some ghosts X and that's some ghosts Y, depending who my target is. And I guess I should have some speed. Speed is two. Okay, let's test this one out. See if it works. So I pick my target. Hit M. So it's moving towards that one down there. I'll hit T again. Hit M. Okay, it obviously picked that one. TM. It happened to pick that one. TM. 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 Now the problem is that's the only one left on the screen, right? So I'm going to hit target right now. So I have locked the target in. Now they're all moving off the screen. I mean, I can hit M in a second here. Let's see which one. And you see my character isn't moving. That must be because whatever the target was, that ghost wasn't on the screen anymore. And so no movement. The little safety check we coded in there works just fine. So that's pretty well it. Thanks for watching that one. See the solutions there weren't too long. Hopefully you're getting the hang of using these instance IDs and these scripts that work with them. Thanks for watching.